Hello students, and welcome to George Washington Speaks. I'm Tom Saffold. George Washington's grandfather, Lawrence Washington, and his siblings were the first of the family to be born in the Virginia colony. In this episode, we'll see how the family prospered in the late 1600s. Great-grandfather John had three surviving children at the Bridges Creek Plantation. My grandfather, Lawrence Washington, was the eldest of the three, and he was born in 1659. He died there 39 years later. When great-grandfather John died, my grandfather Lawrence was 18, and he inherited both the Bridges Creek Plantation with its 1,850 acres and the Little Hunting Creek Plantation with its 2,500 acres. Lawrence's two younger siblings, John Jr. and Anne, inherited very little from their father John, since the common legal practice of the time involving inheritance was primogenitor. It stipulated that the hereditary wealth of the family patriarch went to the oldest son, in this case Lawrence. Now, it may seem unfair to you, but in the 1600s, it was of paramount importance to the aristocracy that the family name survived and was carried on to the next generation. With the eldest male receiving the vast majority of the family's land and accumulated wealth, the family name had a much better chance of surviving than it if it was divided into smaller portions with every generation. As a young man, Grandfather Lawrence was sent to England to finish his education. In adulthood, he was not only a landowner and planter, but he also became a lawyer, soldier, and politician. He served as Sheriff of Westmoreland County and was elected to the Virginia House of Burgesses in 1685 at the young age of 26. Quite frankly, it was well known that he paid little attention to the running of the plantations and did not substantially add to either property during his lifetime. He was much more interested in politics and the law than in running and managing two plantations with all the problems that went along with that. At age 29, he married Mildred Warner one of the three daughters of Augustine Warner, Jr., a wealthy Chester County planter in 1688. Together they had three children, John, Augustine, and Mildred. Uncharacteristically, all three of them lived to adulthood. Mildred, the youngest, was born in 1698. Unfortunately, Lawrence died at age 38, shortly after her birth so she never got to know her father. In a loving gesture, he bequeathed the little Hunting Creek Plantation in his will to his infant daughter. As noted, due to primogenitor, this was an unusual thing to do. Women, for the most part, could not own land, but in this case, Lawrence wanted to make sure that she was well provided for and having control of a working plantation was his effort to do that. And we know that the courts honored her inheritance, since after the deaths of Mildred's first and second husbands, and after her marriage to her third husband, Roger Gregory, in 1718, she still had control of the land. Uh, however, in 1726, Roger and Mildred agreed to sell the property to my father, Augustine Washington, for 180 pounds. That is how the land was retained in the Washington family. After my father's death, my older half-brother, Lawrence, inherited the Little Hunting Creek Plantation, which he renamed Mount Vernon in honor of Admiral Vernon, whom he served under in the military. The opportunities in colonial Virginia brought wealth and prominence to the Washington family. By the early 1700s, they were a family of good position and influence, despite the early deaths so common in that time. In our next episode, we'll learn about George Washington's immediate family. Please join us.